It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. As regular viewers of this motherfucking show may have noticed, me and my submedia slaves spend a good chunk of time showcasing stories from the global motherfucking indigenous resistance. From the Mapuche nation fighting against the ongoing theft of their lands by the Chilean state, to Palestinians resisting illegal settlements and the Israeli fucking army. Anti-colonial resistance is alive and well in today's so-called post-colonial world. In resisting the ongoing colonization of their traditional territories, Indigenous land defenders form a primary global line of defense against many of the destructive mega-projects proposed by the gangsta capitalists of the energy and extractive industries. Here in Canada, indigenous elders and warriors have been at the forefront of struggles against fracking, clear-cut logging, and the construction of oil and gas pipelines. And the motherfucking tar sands. For much of the past decade, this resistance has taken place under the reins of Canada's petrol pimping prime minister, Stephen Harper. West Alberta, mama, take me home. An ultra conservative ideologue and former oil industry lobbyist who went out of his way to gut domestic and international ecological regulations, muscle his environmental critics, and callously ignore the demands of indigenous peeps both at home and abroad. But back in October of last year, Politrix in Canada got a fucking facelift. Harper got his pasty ass tossed to the curb and the voters elected themselves a hunky new overlord. Justin Trudeau. Despite the fact that Trudeau voted for the totalitarian police state inducing legislation, Bill C-51, and unequivocally supports existing pipeline proposals and the expansion of the motherfucking tar sands, loads of so-called progressives are swooning. In part, this is typical lesser evilism, similar to when the man your mama calls Obama took over from the Bush and Cheney cabal in 2008, and this is just an expected byproduct of an electoral system managed by PR companies and mediated by corporate and state media. But another one of the insidious reasons why peeps have shown JT so much love lies in his professed plans to okay. reboot the federal government's relations with the country's First Nations. This shift in tone was signaled in part by his nomination of the country's first indigenous attorney general, Jody Wilson-Raybould, a former regional chief of the BC Assembly of First Nations who before joining the federal government oversaw several rounds of treaty negotiations that attempted to assimilate the unceded indigenous territories of so-called British Columbia by bringing them under the legal jurisdiction of their colonial occupier. As the head honcho of the country's justice department, she is now in charge of dealing with troublesome native groups who continue to maintain their territorial sovereignty, such as the Unistone clan, blocking pipelines in unceded Wet'suwet'en lands. Okay. As Western corporations and their political pets get increasingly wise to the threat posed by the current upsurge in native-led resistance, attempts to co-opt their struggles will no doubt increase. But grassroots indigenous activists and land defenders live lifestyles very different from the sellout leaders that the state handpicks as negotiating partners. These differences have incredibly okay. high stakes particularly when it comes to negotiating treaties and signing infrastructural development projects. 